The serenity of the Superior National Forest in northeastern Minnesota is shattered by the roar of a low-flying helicopter. Inside, pilot Blake Mallow and marksman Trent Brown zero in on their target, a female moose and her calf. Like a cowboy working a herd, Mallow banks the chopper to push the animals into the clear. There's a whole process where you try and work the animal to a certain area, kind of like uh, cutting a horse. You kind of work the helicopter the same way to get it to an opening. Once in the opening, Mallow swoops in low and Brown takes his shot. The tranquilizer isn't taking effect, so Brown hits her with another dart. This one brings the 1,000-pound moose to her knees. Mallow Brown and a team of researchers slog through the deep snow to begin their work. It's very cold here. The wind chills have fallen to as much as 40 degrees below zero. Not exactly ideal laboratory conditions for these researchers. They've set the goal at 20 minutes between darting the animal, harvesting the samples, and getting the moose back on its feet again. She's at 104.6 right now. The team take blood and hair samples, pull a tooth, install a radio collar and GPS, and make the cow swallow a high-tech sensor that will tell the team if a tagged moose has died. Although this is just the second year in a seven-year-long study, researchers suspect climate change may be contributing to the moose die-off. Perhaps weakened by warmer average temperatures, moose are being killed at unprecedented rates by wolves and parasite-borne diseases. This research would not be possible without the skills of Mallow and Brown, who are considered among the best at what is a very dangerous job. It's not your typical type of flying. It's definitely different than, than most helicopter flying. Um, it's just what's necessary for this type of work. You know, I think we take a lot of pride in just the way that we handle the operations from our end and uh, trying to keep it safe for, uh, you know, the animals as much as we can. But what drives them is the quest to save these majestic animals before the moose go the way of the mastodon. For CBS This Morning, Don Daler in northern Minnesota. Like she's been there a few days. The moose of Minnesota are dying, and no one knows why. The state lost 50% of its moose population since 2010. We're probably going to be basing out of either this hell spot. Michelle Karstensen of Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources leads a $1.2 million study. We used to have two significant moose populations in our state, one in the northwest, one in the northeast, and the northwest moose population is pretty much gone. <laughs> In the Superior National Forest, where the snow reached four feet deep in places, researchers in helicopters searched for the thousand-pound animals. They braved the harsh winter conditions because the trees are too thick to see the moose in the summer. We were along when they spotted a cow and her calf. A shot from a tranquilizer gun brought the female to her knees. It's very cold here. The wind chills have fallen to as much as 40 degrees below zero. Not exactly ideal laboratory conditions for these researchers. They've set the goal at 20 minutes between darting the animal, harvesting the samples, and getting the moose back on its feet again. She's at 104.6 right now. The team worked quickly to take blood and hair samples and install a radio collar and GPS. A tiny transmitter was placed in the moose's throat to record its body temperature. That should work good. Even though it's only the second of seven years of research, climate change is a definite suspect. Hold on. Average winter temperatures in northern Minnesota have increased more than four degrees over the past 40 years. Scientists think warmer winters and longer summers may be weakening the heat-sensitive moose and giving wolves more time to hunt them. Parasites also have more time to infect them. So we're kind of a race against time to try to understand what might be driving this. And even if we can figure that out, having a tools on hand to do anything about it is the next challenge. The researchers admit they may not come up with answers before all the moose are gone from Minnesota. But what they ultimately learn may save the moose populations in the rest of North America. Don Daler, CBS News, Superior National Forest.